The tragedy of life is what dies inside a man while he lives. Albert Schweitzer. It was a crisp autumn day, the kind that makes you want to step outside and drink in the crisp air. The days were still warm, and the fall foliage was a kaleidoscope of color, particularly when viewed from a few thousand feet. The pilot that day had a penchant for flying a map of the earth type route when no patient was on board. We skimmed above the trees and he abruptly pulled the aircraft up and down, hugging the treetops or dunes along the lakeshore. After about half an hour, waves of nausea rose into my throat. He laughed and agreed that we would cruise the remaining 15 minutes in a more stable, stomach-friendly attitude. A moment later, we were banking hard to the left, and he asked to patch me into flight control for a message. Our dispatcher had sparse details other than we had been requested to pick up a gunshot victim. Nothing too unusual given the time of year and open hunting season currently upon us. Dust and hay kicked up everywhere as we landed in a clearing next to the farmhouse. Despite the haze, the number of police and EMS lights seemed excessive for only one victim. The horror of the case rapidly unfolded. A five-year-old child found a stray dog and adopted this new puppy. His father would have none of this and promptly loaded his shotgun to take care of the dog. The little boy ran out in front of his dog at the last minute, waving his arms and pleading with his dad not to shoot his dog. The father fired the weapon regardless and struck his child in the forearm. The carnage of the blast mangled his little arm and he was in shock. This child was hemorrhaging, and blood spattered the ground where he lay beside his whimpering puppy. With Godspeed, the first responders applied pressure and used a blood pressure cuff as a tourniquet. That simple act saved this child's life. We started two IVs and rapidly loaded the increasingly pale child into our helicopter. The dad insisted he ride along, but we typically don't transport family members. The emotional charge of the situation makes it difficult to predict how a family member will respond, particularly in the closed confines of the aircraft. His poor judgment had already been demonstrated, and police officers leaned into his personal space with intensity, increasing our physical separation so we could quickly depart. Remarkably, the child remained relatively stable and conscious throughout the return flight. Despite the trauma he had endured, his young body demonstrated remarkable resilience. We had blood products available as a precaution, but we would not need them today. Our wheels softly kissed the hospital roof and we descended the trauma elevator to the ER. I held the child's hand, and my nurse paramedic softly talked to him. She had a unique way with children, calming their fears despite whatever situation had occurred. The pleasure of working with her taught me a lot about how kids process events, especially trauma and how we, as healers, can comfort them in their most dire moments of need despite internal anger over their father's careless actions. As we pushed through the trauma bay doors, we were greeted by the usual cadre of physicians, x-ray technicians, laboratory staff, and the group of residents and attendings who assumed care. He was quickly whisked off to the OR where they worked valiantly to save his arm. He didn't end up with an amputation that day but I'm not sure if he ever regained the full function of his arm and hand. We sat in the trauma bay, finishing chart notes and preparing to head back to the airport hangar when the family arrived. The father walked in last, escorted by police, and tension in the room escalated tenfold. He obviously loved his child as any parent does, but his selfish act had nearly cost his child his life and altered their family forever. Remaining professional and not lashing out at the father was challenging. The mother sobbed and the social worker ushered them to the surgical waiting room, police in tow. I don't know if one ever learns how to deal with a situation like that with any semblance of grace. We all do our best to stifle our emotions, act professionally, and restrain ourselves from doing something we would later regret. I'm sure this father has his own anguish inside, and he'll have a long road ahead as he deals with law enforcement and social services regarding his behavior that day. In trauma situations, those decisions that are made in the blink of an eye permanently alter the course and landscape of multiple people's lives. It always happens that way. I took a deep breath and walked out of the trauma bay, attempting to exhale my anger with a few deep breaths. Learning to control the only thing in my power, myself, was an ongoing lesson.